What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this week's Lumix Live. We have, uh, oh, got to fix my audio levels. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome to this week's Lumix Live. Uh, we have a whole lot of uh, questions to talk about today. Um, we basically, over the last couple of uh, weeks, if you've been joining us live and participating in these streams, you'll know that I haven't been able to get to every single one of the questions that have been asked during the broadcasts, but also... The questions that have been submitted into the Lumix Live at us.panasonic.com um, email address. So I wanted to basically close out the month of March uh, with a broadcast dedicated to just kind of cleaning up those questions, uh, taking new ones from all of you in the community, and just having some more back and forth conversations about this stuff. So uh, if this is the first Lumix Live you are joining us on, Make sure to tag at Lumix Cameras. Uh, as you can see, uh, a couple people have been doing in the chat. It just helps me sort through and, and see the questions that are coming in so we can try to get to them. Uh, this also helps me later when I'm going through to see which questions I missed and want to create a new stream about. Um, a couple things right out of the bat. Uh, for those of you in the U.S. and, uh, well, actually globally... Uh, we have Lumix Pro Services. We've talked about this numerous times, uh, actually every single stream since uh, we started the program. Uh, so we have links down in the description where you can take a look at those uh, different platforms that are available. Uh, we have Red here in the, in the U.S., which is free. We also have the Platinum tier, which is a paid level tier, gets you some added benefits over the basics of Lumix Pro Services. Um, so you can check out the QR codes for the U.S. links. Uh, on the screen now, or you can go to the description below and click on the link for the global uh, portal, which will bring you to uh, where you can see all the different uh, available countries to date. Um, so yeah, instead of going on too far uh, with kind of an intro, let's kind of jump right into it. I've got my G uh, GH6 hooked up here uh, into my Switch so we can jump over and I can go through some of the menus to cover some of these questions. Um... But yeah, so let's let's kind of jump right into this. So <clears> the <throat> first question that I see here comes from Chris Flores. It says, uh, what power bank does someone recommend for the S1? Not spec, actual power bank, please. Yeah. So uh, this is actually one of the wrong camera angle. Uh, this is actually one of the questions that we've been getting a lot recently with power banks and what actually is required and, and what will work with the Lumix cameras. Um, and there's kind of two stages for how they can work. So one is you plug it in and you get the notice in the back of the camera that says, hey, power the camera off to charge the battery. And what that's indicating is that you're using a trickle charge, basically. Um, it's not communicating, the charger connection is not communicating with the camera properly uh, for which uh, spec it actually needs to be able to power while running. So... On our global page here, we have a list of ones that have been tested and confirmed working with the S-series cameras as well as the S5 and the G100 and GH5 Mark II. Now, the GH6, we still haven't added it to this uh, list yet, um, but be aware that this is where you'll see uh, those particular lists get updated. So this is on the Panasonic support site. Uh, I'll drop a link down in the chat in a little bit. So... Uh, right off the bat, you'll see that most of these that are recommended, actually all of them that are recommended are from Anchor. Uh, the PowerCore Plus is the one you want to look for. But realistically, um, we haven't been able to obviously test every single one of the battery uh, external battery sources that are out on the market. Um, the biggest thing that you want to make sure that you look for is that it says that it supports explicitly... 9 volt 3 amp on the USB PD specification. Um, and the reason I mention that is recently uh, it's actually come a little bit more, I guess, to light in our industry, in the, the photo video side, that some of the power banks that are out on the market use, in some cases, their own proprietary uh, method for connecting on uh, the proper power specifications. And some of the Anchor products use their Power IQ system, which theoretically should be the same as USB PD. Uh, but in some cases, because of the communication that's required, it may not work. 
Um, so like as an example, I have this uh, PowerCore 3 10,000 milliamp hour that I use actually for my phone because it's got wireless. Uh, this one won't work with the GH6 because of its communication protocols for USB. But this RAV Power 10,000 milliamp hour one that I have here very clearly specs USB-C power delivery. So the PD specification, you see it actually, it's hard to see on this one because of the way it's screen printed. Uh, but it actually says PD on the USB-C port. Uh, this one does support power and uh, charge while using the cameras. So uh, make sure you look for those particular specs. From the anchor side, we have, I keep pointing like you can see my computer screen, well you can. Um, make sure that it, it, one, if it's on the list here, we've tested it and it, it'll work with, with your uh, S camera. Um, the GH6, just we're still going through the ones that can actually work. Uh, but I have tested this RAV Power one. This is a Pioneer uh, PD, uh, was it RAV Power PD Pioneer? Um, and it states 9 volt 3 amp on it. Uh, and that one does work, but my Anchor one does not on the GH6. Uh, and they both work on my, actually, no, the uh, RAV, RAV Power works on my S cameras. The Anchor one, uh, I have to turn the cameras off to actually charge the battery. Otherwise, they sustain to a point. Um, but in situations where you're drawing more power than the trickle charge can, your battery will lower down, but it will ex extend your battery life. Just not in the way that you'd, you'd think, uh, for USB power delivery. So yeah, hopefully that, that, uh, answers your question, Chris. Uh, let's see here. Strons. Why remove the cable notch on the GH6 battery compartment? Uh, direct power solutions are ruined with the new porthole design. Um, so we've been using the porthole design uh, for the power supplies on basically everything outside of the GH line of cameras. Um, part of this, uh, I'll tell you, part of this is we don't test or specify third-party manufacturers making power connectors to work with the cameras. Yes, they design them based on when they get their hands on the camera. Um, we don't facilitate that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I have seen in some cases that some of the, uh, connector ends may be a little too large to fit through the port. Um, but ultimately we design for our, uh, our parts. So if you're using a battery eliminator, you should be using the DCC 17. That is the official battery eliminator for the camera that is designed to fit properly and work with our cameras. Um, so any third party, it's not like we're necessarily going to go out of our way to design specifically around some other third party accessory that's like in the S cameras, it's not part of the LMAT Alliance in the G series cameras. That's just not something that we make um, because we can't control what um, the safety behind third party accessories. So uh, it's designed based on what our accessories are designed for. And it's fairly common practice. Um, across the board because that's what's important. We need to make sure that the equipment that we are making to support, uh, especially when it comes to power, um, is is within a, a, a design way that can be managed uh, properly and, and supported properly by the brand. So um, I hear you, Strons. Uh, it is something that we can pass up to our engineers um, to see is, is there another reason why that particular design was uh, removed. Um, but yeah. That's just kind of how it is. Uh, let's see. Strons also uh, need more frame rates for 4.4K anamorphic or open gate on the GH6. Um, this one I have heard. Uh, so with the GH6, you've got uh, 48 frame and 60 frames per second in 4.4K. Um, my understanding of this is if you need or want to be shooting in 24 or 30 frame, just shoot the open gate, uh, the full open gate, the 5.8K. Um, 4.4K is so that you can get the faster frame rates in the full sensor or in a four by three aspect ratio for anamorphic. So um, it is something that I will pass on to our engineers uh, to see if it is something. I know uh, those of you who've joined uh, numerous times, you know that Matt Frazier and I talk a lot about this stuff. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll uh, make sure that that gets brought up. Um, I can't make any promises, obviously, but we will uh, bring it up. Yeah. 
Uh, Andre, when, uh, GH6, uh, when is internal or external recording, uh, firmware being released? Um, so I don't have any updates on when the first round of firmware, uh, update is coming out. Um, for those that don't remember, uh, or haven't heard what that is, that is the, uh, external SSD, uh, recording over USB, uh, more ProRes options, as well as the 4K 120 and raw data over HDMI in 4K 120. Um, as soon as that is announced and we are closer to a date that it is actually going to be released, uh, you can be uh, sure that we're going to talk about it on this stream. Um, so, uh, yeah, get subscribed, all that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll always be getting that information probably earliest uh, here and over on our social channels. So, uh, Strons again, uh, GH6, raw photo support in Adobe apps would be nice to have soon. Yes, yes, it would be. Um, we don't have control over timing uh, when Adobe or DxO or uh, On One or any of them add their support. Uh, I think this particular go around of cameras uh, coming out of the market was a little bit of a, a change because one, with the GH6, totally new sensor, totally new processor, totally new type of file. Um, you have to remember these are 16-bit container uh, files for the RAW. So it's not as easy as just a slight change uh, to update raw support. Um, it, it, it is a lot more involved between the previous cameras. Um, so sometimes they just take a little bit longer. And then at the same time, you're also bound by when those particular companies have their, up, their own schedules for update cycles. Um, so hopefully it's going to be soon. Um, I'm hopeful that it's very soon. In the meantime... There is the Silky Pick software that we do provide free with the camera, um, so that that can at least get you converted into 16-bit uh, TIFFs. Um, would be cool if that software did DNGs, but I can understand why it doesn't. Uh, but yeah, so we we are totally pushing the same way, uh, wanting more uh, raw support for the cameras. Uh, let's see here, Nick. Uh, so much fun after two weeks of the GH6. I love it. Question, has anyone received complimentary CF Express cards yet? Uh, no mention during the registration process. Uh, so that is actually something that I have been following up with, uh, with our, at least here in the U.S., because that's the only group that I can, uh, that I have any real connection with, um, on what the process is. I understand that it, it is done through the LPS platform, so when you register the camera, um, everything's reviewed that you've got the camera and all that kind of fun stuff and that you're registered with LPS, uh, and shipping is actually happening pretty quickly. So it may just be getting through the, uh, re the report of new users. Um, so, but I will follow up with the team and see if there are any known hangups or any issues there. Um, that's the kind of stuff that if you want to follow up, you can either, uh, reach out to us through the Lumix Live at us.panasonic.com email address. Um, and I can see it there and check it because I don't get emails that go to the Lumix Pro Service team. Or uh, if you're over on Instagram, you can uh, drop into our DMs and uh, reach out to me through there. Uh, and I can always follow up uh, that way as well. I can't promise an immediate response to every email, uh, but we will uh, follow up and provide an update. Uh, if I can get an update, by next week's stream, uh, which I'm fairly certain I will, I, I'll make sure to address it next week as well. So let's see here. William, thanks for the S5 chat last week. Glad to see the S5 won't be forgotten with a new launch of a flagship. Yeah, uh, it, it's it's always challenging when you know I'm, I'm planning content for this particular stream because we've got, obviously we want to focus on the new camera. That's you know, playing the algorithms, that's the one that's going to get the biggest turnout uh, and, and the biggest interest. But yeah, we have so much with the rest of the cameras that are still incredibly awesome. So uh, we're going to start mixing in a lot more of the regular content back into here. Hopefully we're going to get back into having uh, guests back on as well um, relatively soon. And then at the end of the month, we're at NAB. So um, I don't think we'll be doing a stream live from NAB. Actually, I'm fairly certain we won't. Um, being the first major show that we're going back to in person. Uh, but if you're going to be at NAB, swing by the Panasonic booth, uh, you'll be able to talk to Matt Fraser, uh, myself, and Neil, uh, as well as one of our ambassadors, Todd White. Uh, we'll all be at the show. So uh, it's a little plug for NAB. Come by. Uh, let's see here. 
Um, Christian, hi. I saw your video. Very clearly better noise and detail in high ISOs, but DPR seems to not agree with you in recent articles uh, that I have surely read. Yes, can I address it? Um, so for one, um, we don't... All of my testing and working with the camera, and obviously take this with as much of a grain of salt as you want, because I work for the company. Um, all of my editing and all of my work is done in Silky Picks because that's the only consumer available raw editing software um, that works with the GH6 currently. Um, I don't know how DP Review did their raw testing. I don't know. Uh, I do notice that they were on 1.0 firmware, I think, for some of the pictures. Um, we do have 1.1 firmware, uh, which is out right now for the camera. Um, but ultimately, I mean, that's the purpose of an independent um, reviewing community and journalistic community. They're testing under their own methodology. Um, far be it for me to, to go in and criticize anyone's way of... of reviewing content. Uh, I've had conversations with the guys over at DP Review. They're awesome people. Um, but it is something that is not in line with what I've seen and what a lot of others have seen uh, in the files from the camera. So it's possible that maybe whatever they were using for raw conversion may have not been optimized properly yet. Uh, but ultimately, that's something that you reach out to DP Review. Um, if you feel like anything... Um, all of our platforms, when we're creating content and we're interacting with communities, whether it's on a forum or here, you know, user feedback is what's important. Um, none of us are infallible. Um, and that's also not to say that there's anything wrong with what their results were. Um, yeah, I, I've read it. I've seen it. Uh, it. I can say that it doesn't match up with my own uh, experiences working with the files, even when I download their files and process them through uh, Silky Picks. Uh, but yeah, that's about as much as I can really say on it. Um, <clears throat> it's the first one that's come out uh, from them so far. Uh, and that's part of the other thing. It, it's a new sensor. It's new processing. Uh, raw development can take a little bit longer than normal uh, with the whole new system in place. So yeah, um, what I would suggest is if you are looking at that uh take go download silky picks we have it for free if you uh look up the user guide for the gh6 um or the user's manual uh there is a link to the silky Picks software in there uh and you can um download the raw files and play with them yourself uh and make your own judgment on it um remember that all all media outlets and especially this these are just multiple different points of uh, point of view, so different ways. And the team over there at DP Review is awesome at reminding people about that, that it's one point of view. Um, no one source is ever going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, the total end-all, be-all of, of, you know, fact uh, in, in, in something as subjective as photo editing and video editing. So uh, let's see here. Where were we? Uh, we talked about that one. Um, where were we? Dave's Nature. Uh, would love to see 422 all i 400 megabit options for 5.7K since ProRes takes up as much space as AG. Since ProRes takes up so much space and HEVC is 420. Uh, I hear you. Um, some of those kinds of things, when you go up to 422 all I versus 420, which is an IPB codec, they could be, uh, they, they might be combinations that fall outside of either thermal load or um, like the, uh, the uh, uh, processing load. So it's possible that there may be a, a solid reason why those particular options aren't in there. There's also the possible reason that, you know, the the difference in image quality between 400 megabits at 422 all i versus 420 10-bit um, may not be as big of a, um, may not be as big of a, a, an actual image quality difference. If the stream skips, I apologize. For some reason, OBS is freaking out that the bit rates keep dropping down to zero. So hopefully the buffer's working okay. Got a really hate spectrum 
Okay. Um. All right, Peter. Uh, registered GH six. Um. Okay. Yeah. So we talked about that. Should it should be automatically triggering getting you the uh, CF Express card. Um. You may have seen this. You may have seen this question. But why do Lumix cameras smell like pine? I have not seen that question, so I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's see here. Uh, can you use the crop mode on the S5 for photography to get longer reach from a lens, or is that limited for video only? So the crop. Um, the APS-C or Super 35 crop is limited just to video. Uh, in the photography side, shoot raw, full frame, and then crop. It's the exact same thing. Um, it just doesn't crop in camera. So, let's see here. Um, let's see here. The, uh, from Cliff, the GH6 and S1H V-Log gamma curve are different. Uh, where there'll be a GH6 specific lot. So, V-Log and V-Gamma in the GH6 and the S1H, they are the same. The difference is where your highlight point is clipping. Um, and obviously how much shadow information you get. So, uh, if there would be a specific GH6 LUT from us, I don't think so. Um, it's because the same LUT's going to work. It's just your different highlight clipping point. Um, I don't think there will be one, but I can check in and uh, reach out to our engineers and see if that is something that's being considered. Uh, or if it's even actually necessary, if there actually would be a need for it. Um, you, you, some of the resources over on the Facebook groups are way better at, at the information about LUTs than I am. Um, people like Dennis, uh, over on the Facebook groups, definitely talk to a lot of them. They're doing a lot of really cool work with, uh, custom LUTs, uh, for the camera. So let's see here. Um, where are we? Uh, all right. So. I got my, uh, this is from Tim M. I got my GH6 and so far I'm loving it. One question relating to photography. What exactly is the function AF AE lock hold supposed to do? It doesn't seem to lock AE when engaged. Um, so AE AF lock uh, in the camera menu, uh, you can go in and tell it, do you want it to uh, lock AF or lock auto exposure? Um, by default, if I go to my camera angle, uh, by default, if I actually, let me put this in a photography mode. Uh, by default, if I come in here and I go to, that's a good question. Where is AEAF lock? I never use it. So I usually don't have to go into a menu to find it. Um, so AEAF lock lock hold. So if I were to turn this on and then go in, all right, so right now it's on AAF. If I go in and reprogram one of my buttons to AEAF lock, so basically what, what you're, you're doing there is it's going to lock the AF and lock the AE. Um, when you're shooting with it, uh, I have the camera hooked up. So, uh, and the mode I'm in is not supported. So, uh, basically it's, it's either going to lock your auto exposure or your auto focus. Um, pretty much the same as the previous cameras do, depending on what you've got setting wise, you may not actually notice anything with it. Uh, if you've got the camera set in say full manual and you're moving between highlight and shadow, um, with your exposure meter, you can lock the exposure and move it. Um, if you're in program, it would work that way too. Uh, so just a couple different ways that you can set it up there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I have, all right, George says, I have a, a basic question. The back of the screen is dark most of the time. How do I fix this? Um, you mean the brightness of the screen? If it's the brightness of the screen, uh, you do that by going into the menu Go to the wrench, uh, go into your monitor display, and then you have monitor backlight. Uh, by default, out of the box, they're all set to auto, uh, but you can brighten and darken the rear display um, so that it doesn't change with ambient uh, lighting. Uh, that's how you would uh, basically fix that and set it up for your particular uh, 
liking. Uh, let's see here. Lumix, is it possible to get 4K 120 FPS on the S5 uh, on a firmware update? Probably not. Uh, 4K 120, I mean, the amount of thermal management that it had to go into the S1 or the GH6 to get 4K 120 with a totally new processor uh, and a new sensor, um, that's not a that's not a firmware update that's that's more of a hardware update for a camera like that um let's see here i can't go above full hd 120 fps in pixel to pixel mode any reason for this um yeah i uh, pixel to pixel at uh full hd 120 is getting you the the actual full pixel to pixel as you start to go higher and faster uh is where you start using the full sensor uh the actual full resolution so the camera uses um the full sensor width uh up to 120 frames per second and then anything over that uh it does i can't remember exactly which one it is but it 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 does the normal scaling uh that's commonly used for higher frame rates uh, so that's why when you get over 120, it, it's, it has to use all the information to create the uh, readout speeds needed for faster than 120. So when you go to 300 frames per second, 240, stuff like that. Um, but 240 being in HFR mode is high frame rate. It's a native. You're actually getting 240 frames per second. So um, that's usually why uh, Ulrich. Ulrich. I think it's Ulrich. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, I apologize. Uh, let's see here. Uh, William Turner echoing, uh, yeah, in camera would be awesome, but external. Yeah. So that, that's most likely hardware. I'm fairly confident. That's not something that can be firmware updated. Um, it needs new hardware to support, uh, that kind of setup. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, the reason I ask about, okay, from Strons, the reason I ask about 4.4K mode, uh, codec filtering excessively separates, oh, exclusively separates 4.4. Yeah, part of that's because 4.4 is also a crop on the sensor. Um, so it's a slight crop on the sensor to get the faster readouts. That's why they're separated. Um, well, one of the reasons, the other's resolution. But um, I, I will bring it up to the team uh, and let them know uh, if it's possible to do those frame rates in 4.4k. Um, yeah, definitely a, a, a good point. Uh, and glad to see you on here, Strons. Uh, oh, thank you, YouTube. Where were we? So we got that one. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, they came with G6 and texted that number for something it was supposed to get. Uh, I'll have to check on that question, Sacred. Um, I don't ever really get the uh, final manufacturing shipping boxes. So the, the box, the same box that all of you get with the cameras. So not all the stuff is in the box that I get. Um, I'll, I'll have to take a look and check. Uh, Marcus says, what's the model number of the official GH6 dummy battery? Uh, so it is the DCC David Charlie Charlie uh, dash 17. So 17. DCC 17. Uh, and then the AC adapter that you need is the AC 10. This is the AC adapter that you get if you want to do wall power. And then DCC 17 is the one for the GH6. Uh, some sites that have been selling them for a while may only have them listed as the GH5 Mark II and the S5 because uh, it's the same battery being used between those three cameras. Um, so the description might just not be fully updated, but it is DCC-17. Uh, let's see here. Um, the lens is off. What I see is a histogram on the left. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm following that one question. All right. Uh, Nick says, when in photo mode, example, aperture, how can I have 4K 120 video on the record button? I keep having to switch back to creative movie mode and then I lose my framing and the bird is gone. Um, I don't think there's an easy way. Uh, because the higher frame rates need the camera to be in creative movie mode um, because the way the whole system's processed, uh, I, I don't think there is a direct easy way to do it. 
one of the things that I maybe would suggest, it's not as slick, um, you still will, will have to change a dial, is to program maybe your photo, your uh, photo controls into like C1, and then 4K 120 into C2. This way, when you do have to make the change, you're only changing that top dial, uh, the one top dial quickly. Uh, and then you're framing, you minimize how much your frame has to change. Uh, that's probably what I would recommend most. Um, because in the regular photo-oriented mode, you're not going to get uh, the 4K 120 just by pressing the red button. Um, yeah, so a little bit of a little bit of a difference. Uh, but that is, that's also one of those things that I will bring up to our team and just kind of see, is there an easier way to implement this? Um, and, and if it's even possible. Let's see here. GH6 is incredible, by the way. Only nitpicking little gripes. I've noticed after shooting with the GH5 for the past five years. Yeah. Uh, fun little things, uh, that have, have changed, uh, as, as the systems evolved and grown over the years. So, um, glad you're liking the GH6. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's a histogram. Okay, that's the one that I didn't I didn't really follow from George. Um, Chris, uh, S1 needs the spot meter the S5 has and sizable frame markers. Uh, with its unlimited recording, the S1 is my pro cam interview setup over the S5. Oh, okay. I follow. Yeah. So the, I think what you're referencing to is the highlight spot, spot metering, which, uh, if I go into the camera, uh, the S five and the newer cameras have highlight weighted spot metering. I think that's what you're meaning. Um, if not, please let me know. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I can check and see if that's something that we would be able to be brought over to the, uh, S one. Uh, it might not be, um, looking at the age of the GH, or not the GH6, the age of the S1, and whether or not that processor setup has everything needed to do all of these uh, additional things. Uh, but yeah, it's something we definitely uh, bring up. Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Strawn says, FYI, anyone interested? Anton Bauer, Titan Base, USB, trickle charge, GH6, more than enough, last full day of shooting, gives you a little, like, little text warning. Yeah, so there's plenty of power solutions out there, and, and that's kind of the thing, is if it's not actually on that 9-volt 3-amp specific over USB, you run into that. If you're going to be using an external uh, uh, battery eliminator, that's where you can get a little more creative with it, but sometimes, it's, you know, there's reasons why certain things have to be, uh, you know, managed that way. Um... Christian, if the 4K 120 is oversampled, uh, could we get 5.7K 120 even with caveats and limitations? Probably not, because 5.7K, the amount of data being processed may be past what um, what is currently possible on the engine and the sensor. Um, you could also, the other thing to remember too is the larger the image area that you're recording, the more rolling shutter you potentially can be introducing. So if it doesn't fall within the uh, image guidelines, you're probably not going to see it. Um, yeah, so probably not. Uh, but again, something we bring up. Uh, let's see here. With Lumix being a very progressive company in the camera world, is there any chance of making an in-house machine learning accelerated d -nice software suite for Lumix RAWs? Um... I would never say never, but we're not really a software company. Um, we are a hardware manufacturer. Um, software, not to say that we're not capable, um, but I also don't know any camera brand that is developing their own machine learning accelerated denoising. Um, everyone is either partnering with an external company uh, or there are better ways to do it with... Uh, the external companies who know how their programs work um, and then integrate them into their software suites. Um, so it's, you know, stuff like that might just not make sense for a camera brand to actually get into. Um, you know, getting into a whole new side of the business that you're not really focused on. Um, we'll make the hardware. 
let software companies make the uh, the software support. Uh, let's see here. Where was that last question that just went in? Um, can we expect ProRes RAW on Ninja 5 compatibility anytime soon over firmware update? Um, so the only thing that we've talked about is the 4K 120 RAW over HDMI support for the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. That does have to be the Plus model. Um, that's the only thing that we have talked about so far. Um, as soon as we have more information when that firmware update's going to be released, we will make sure that everyone knows. Uh, so yeah, right now, I, I just don't have any more updated info to, to share. Um, let's see here. Uh, AC, Focus Transition, is that still available? Uh, yes, it is. On the GH6, uh, Focus Transition is available. Uh, it is in the, if I go into the actual video mode, uh, focus transition is definitely available. So we go into the settings here. If I can remember where it is, there it is. So focus transition, please set the focus point. Thank you. Um, but it has also been adjusted, actually. Um, it's It's been tweaked quite a bit from the previous generations. So... Uh, now the way you actually activate it is you set your three points with the white balance ISO and exposure comp uh, button. Buttons on the top of the camera. So I can go to my 105 and I'll pick position two. Uh, and then when I do set, I can now just click between those two positions. Oop. So I can jump between my two positions here and do my focus, my repeatable focus pulls. So it gives you a lot of, a lot of flexibility in, in setting it up. And more importantly, uh, we made the system a lot easier to use before you had to go in and out of menu to change each one of those positions. Now it's, it's a much easier to use, uh, kind of dial there or uh, much easier to use UI. Uh, let's see here. Jake asks, do you know if there's a way to lock just the shutter wheel on the S5? I, so the operation lock functionality on the S5, if you do actually turn operation lock on, in the menu, you uh, go in and basically you just say lock control dials. Um, it's going to lock front and back. Um, I have mine in certain cases if I'm shooting an event. Uh, I'll have it set up where one of my back uh, command dial buttons, so that's the back four-way directional pad, is my toggle on and off uh, for operation lock. Because usually if I'm shooting, and I'm a bit of a, a different case for this, uh, if I'm shooting, say, a lens that has an aperture ring on it, um, I'm using the aperture ring uh, to do my aperture change, and then my shutter speeds are, are locked typically. Uh, so I usually don't have to worry too much about the the uh, unlocking both of those particular dials. So, yeah, at the moment it's going to lock front and back. So, yeah, that's just that's just kind of how it's set up right now. Uh, Steven says, will there be more options for the GH6 photo bracketing mode coming in a firmware update? They're quite limited at the moment. Um, I'm curious to what you think is limited. Um, it's the same bracketing options we've had in the Lumix cameras for quite some time now. Uh, but if there's something missing, that's not to say that, you know, if there's something missing, just let us know, uh, and we can feed that to the engineers and see if it's something that they can easily add in um yeah otherwise it's pretty much the same as it's been actually it's identical to what it's been for last couple generations of cameras uh let's see here the dynamic range boost is a real beast of feature so handy however it brings up a good amount of noise especially in the shadows is there a workaround you recommend so i've seen a couple uh people ask about this and one of the things, so one, dynamic range boost, especially if you're shooting in V-Log, your native ISO at that point is 2000. So that's the base ISO and the native ISO that you can work at. That's going to get you the best dynamic range, uh, dynamic range to noise profile out of the camera. Um, as far as 
the noise goes some of that especially in the shadows is going to come down to how you're actually exposing um for vlog um there is i think a bit of a uh an interesting logic online of just saying you know ettr and just you know kind of push two stops and then you expose and really that's not really how you should shoot um your your mid uh, middle gray should be set at well there's two ways to look at this if you're able to light your scenario, middle gray or 18% gray should be at 42 IRE. That's how you should be exposing. And then you light or look at your highlights to see how far over, how far under they are. You bring in lighting uh, to bring your shadows up to an acceptable point. So you're not digging them out in post. Uh, and you uh, use a, a good enough exposure or whatever that's going to get you enough highlight info. I think you can get about five and a half stops out of the highlight retention when you're using DR boost. So you get a lot of flexibility. That is where you want to actually really utilize. Do I have it? Yeah. That is where you want to utilize luminance spot meter on the camera. Uh, so you'll be able to take this tool, put it on the highlights. So say the clouds in the sky. And if you're in V log, so I'll change this to V log real quick. So if I'm in V log, I can look here and say, okay, my back wall there uh, behind the lens is only 2.3 stops overexposed. Uh, and I'm at uh, F1.2, 2000 ISO in, in this office space. Uh, but if I start raising my ISO, you'll see that that number can keep climbing and climbing and climbing all the way up to 4.9 stops. What that's telling me is that I can pull that highlight information back. I know that I'm going to have more than enough highlight latitude uh, to adjust my exposure later. Um, ultimately, it's where you want your midtones to be. If you want them to be, you know, properly exposed, you want them at, at 42 IRE or zero on the luminance spot meter scale. Um, and that'll get you the best kind of making sure you've got the proper exposure. Uh, if you can't light your scenario, like the vast majority of, of use cases in the real world, you kind of make up your choice in, in the field instead of just blindly, you know, shooting a stop and a half over two stops over. Um, that's where use something like luminance spot meter where your high brightest highlight point is and use that to expose to where you're just not clipping the highlight, which will lift your midtones and then it's going to lift your shadow, give you more information and less noise in those areas and then bring it back down in post. Um, with your grading uh, to kind of minimize some of the noise. Um, and ultimately, definitely talk to more, you know, people more like Dennis and if you're over on the Facebook groups and those that actually work uh, in color grading, they'll have much better uh, kind of guidance in some of those things than I think I will. Uh, but that's always been my experience is if I shoot and make sure that I'm just shooting up to protecting my highlights, uh, I know I can get some pretty solid dynamic range out of it and minimal noise. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jeff says, when using adapted lenses, the lens focal length usually entered in for IBS is not passing along in the EXIF data. Any chance Panasonic would consider this? It's important to you. Um, I can bring it up to them. I don't know how you would do it properly. Um, but it's something that we can bring up so that it's in metadata. Because uh, I... I I can see why it would be important uh, to add in there. You might run into some of the confusions if you're on, say, like a GH6 and you've got a full-frame lens, you're using an APS-C lens. How do you tell the camera what lens it is so that it actually calculates the right, um, the right information for the metadata? Some of that stuff might just be the semantics of why it's not included, uh, but I will definitely uh, point it out to our team. Uh, let's see here. There's a high resolution mode question here. Uh, is the high resolution mode on the S5 similar to the GH6 in terms of minimizing motion, or is it more comparable to the G9? I'm looking at the S5 to complement your micro four thirds system that you have. Uh, the S5's, uh, mode two or motion correction, uh, for the tripod based, uh, stable, uh, high resolution shot mode. Uh, it's more advanced than the G9, not as advanced, not as advanced as the GH6. Uh, it's probably a good way to put it. Of the cameras that you're looking at, 
uh, the S5 is going to be the closest to the GH6. Um, but the GH6 is on a whole nother level because that one is designed to be able to be used handheld. The S5, we don't market or advertise that at all. Uh, the S5, G9, or S1s that can do high-res mode, they're not meant for handheld with their motion correction. Um, they're, they're meant for on a tripod correcting scene motion, not hand motion. So, but yeah, the S5 is going to be the closest you can get. Uh, let's see here. Jake says, if I record to a Ninja 5 in H.265, can you opt to have Lumix colors baked into the image? You can. Um, the way you would do this is shoot into the Ninja 5 with, like, if you're, if you're shooting in V-Log, you can uh, tell the camera to output the LUT uh, from the footage. So if you've loaded in a LUT that you like, you have it in the camera, and then you're sending that vlog footage with a LUT applied over HDMI into the Atomos Ninja 5, uh, yeah, it would record it as you see it. Um, probably better to record it in vlog and then do the LUT afterwards, because um, this way you're not stuck with if after you shoot you realize that you want to change it. Um, but it is one way to get a little bit smaller of a file, since you can record HEVC, um, and then you can load your own looks in there and just kind of have a, a deliver ready file if you want. Um, just make sure that you have LUT display over uh, HDMI or LUT display HDMI turned on. Um, and that's going to be in the, I think it's in the wrench menu. Uh, actually, it might be in here. Nope. Shows you how often I do uh, work with LUTs. So, view assist, view assist, view assist. Let's see here. Uh, Vlog view assist. So, you load yours, uh, you load, pick the LUT that you want to use here, and then you want to make sure that LUT view assist on HDMI is turned on. And as you can see, because I have the camera hooked up over HDMI, uh, the LUT is now visible over HDMI, where if I turn it off, now it's just uh, flat log. So yeah, uh, make sure you have that turned on, and then you should be okay, uh, and you'll be able to record that. So, uh, Feature request, please add a red or yellow clip line on the waveform display. Uh, yes, we, we have definitely asked for that one, um, Cliff, uh, and we will continue to ask. Uh, let's see here. Uh, where were we? Steven, uh, will there be a possibility of a frame reference overlay feature being added, just like you can onion skin in the live view? That would be really useful. Um, you talking on the GH6? Uh, on the GH6, I believe we do have, uh, frame overlay on it. Although, to be fair, with the number of cameras that I've been working with recently, back and forth, I do get things mixed up sometimes. Uh, okay. If it's not there, uh, I will bring it up to our, uh, our team and let them know. Let's see here. Um, okay. Uh, this one, this is a good one. Uh, is it possible with the GH6 to limit ISO low and high in creative mode, a mode priority? So I think this is a slight misunderstanding of how the, the GH6 works with ISOs. There is no high and low circuit per se in this camera. So unlike dual native ISO that you have on a GH5S or on the S series cameras, there is no selecting a high or a low circuit. They're running at the same time. So when you turn DR boost on, it runs both of them at the same time. When it's off, it runs like a normal uh, or a more traditional uh, ISO ramp circuit. So yeah, there isn't really 
limiting for high or low. Um, you can do that manually by going in and just setting up your own ISO uh, range that you want to work with, because you can set a low number and a high number. Um, but you'd have to do that for every single uh, change. It's, it is inherently a different way that the sensor is actually creating an image uh, compared to the traditional what we understand as a dual native ISO uh, system. This camera has one native ISO um, and that's changes whether or not you have the DR boost on or the DR boost off. So uh, let's see. Uh, how to use IS statoscope in video or photo mode. I see a potential to improve posture grip, but I can't find a way to get uh, continuous live feedback. So um, the way the way IS statoscope is designed is specifically set up so that, like if I put the camera back into the f uh, photography mode here, when you half press the shutter is when it's going to be active and, and running. So that's, that's what lets you see... Uh, you know, that it's, that it's working. Um, in video mode, one of the things that you want to, uh, just double check and make sure that you've got set up on is that your stabilization, which if I can remember which menu it is. So image stabilization, you'll see that unlike the S series cameras, you don't have an option here to say always on or always off or half press. Um, it is inherently different, um, than the existing S series cameras. So if you want it on, um, and have it showing while you're, you're moving, just make sure your, your shutter buttons half pressed. Uh, if you're in the video mode, I believe it's, you can do the same thing if you're not using auto. Um, uh, like if you're using manual focus, just half press the shutter and have IS statoscope on, and then you'll be able to see it. So yeah, it, that, that would be probably my best recommendation, uh, for how to get that to work. Um, let's see here, uh, it would be nice to set up custom aspect ratios or at least custom aspect ratio preview, like 60% transparency, nine by 16 while recording 16 by nine. So funny you should say that. So in the frame guideline, uh, option that the GH6 has. So if I go down into my frame guideline, oh, wrong one, I want frame markers. So if I go into frame markers, go into set, there is a new one available called custom, which lets me create my own guidelines. Uh, and then you basically can just program in how, what size you want them to be. And of course I hit the shutter button. So it disappears. Um, this lets you go in and adjust exactly how you want these frame guidelines set up. So then when you actually save them, I can then, you know, obviously change what the frame that I want is, and then I can go in and go to the kind of standardized um, options available. So you do have the ability to customize this, um, maybe just not infinite customizing uh, for the different uh, kind of setups. So, Let's see here, uh, Sean Bruce Media, can you guys make uh, the JPEG color profiling settings more robust, similar to what Fuji does? More detailed settings or to be able to apply LUT to a raw image in camera, less PC work. Uh, not sure what you mean by more robust. Um, if you could give us more info, I can make sure I can pass that kind of stuff on to our engineers uh, and see if it's something that they can do. Um, but you do have the ability to apply the color profiles afterwards to the raw file in the Adobe software. Um, our profiles are built into there. Uh, same with the silky pick software. So if you shoot something in say standard and you want to throw cine D on it uh, or cine D two with the GH six, you just do it in post and you get the same effect. Um, so you do have that capability. Um, if you mean being able to create one and then load it into the camera, that's a little different. Um, the way our LUT system works is it, it is designed around video, not photo. Uh, so I don't know how easy it would be to transition that over to the photography side. Um, let's see. That was JPEG. Uh, 
the red recording box is really nice feature for recording videos. Is the red recording box a default setting to on for the new cameras? No, it's actually not default set to on. You do have to go into the menu and turn it on if you want. Um, so yeah, fortunately not default, but it is in there. So, uh, let's see here. I have to say, as much as I love the GH6, one thing I really don't like is the new joystick. The one in the GH5 is way better, and I don't understand uh, why change it. So, the GH5 was only a four-way joystick, if I remember. We moved to the eight-way joystick. It's I think it's the same joystick that's in the S5 um, and some of those cameras. So, part of it's just that's we feedback over the years. You start seeing which ones people tend to like more and... I, at this go around, we got a lot of positive feedback on the um, the S series way that the joystick functions. So, yeah, some of it may also just come down to the tactile feel too. Personally, I like a more pronounced joystick in the back compared to the little bit, excuse me, flatter one that we use on the uh, GH6. Uh, but I've noticed after working with the camera for how many months now? Probably like three or four months. Um, I've gotten really, really comfortable and useful with it. So, yeah. Um, I'd say maybe just give it a little bit more time. Um, it might grow on you. Uh, but I can totally understand when you're com where, you're, where you're coming from. Uh, let's see here. Are there adapter cables for the XLR1 uh, so you could put it on a different point on the cage so we can add a top handle? Um, we don't make one. Um, that's about as much as I can say. We don't make one, and I can't give you a recommendation of uh, a third-party piece that may or may not work. Um, look at the pinout design on the XLR1, and look at the pinout design on the GH6 or the S-series cameras that use the XLR1, um, and you might be able to make some conclusions yourself. Um as to what kind of flash extension cable might work. So, yeah. Um, just remember, doing anything where you're going to move a connection like that off the camera, um, you do introduce four additional points of possible, or technically three additional points of possible failure. Um, so just keep that in mind uh, if you do find a cable that works. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, we don't really make them. Um, yeah. See here, Cliff, can you please extend all future Lumix Live sessions to be two hours instead of one? Um, I've thought about doing much longer ones, but truthfully, I'd lose my voice and the amount of content that I'd have to come up with, plus all the other stuff I do for the company, I'd probably honestly lose lose my mind a little bit. Um, we'll always take it into consideration, though, Cliff, uh, if, if, if we can ex expand these longer. Uh, and if, if viewership actually sticks to them, that's kind of the thing. As it is in an hour long, um, we've gotten some pretty good viewership. You guys do seem to, you know, hang around and, and ask tons of questions for the entire time. Um, and I love it. Uh, as we go through this year, you know, we're always looking to expand this and make this better and better every single time. So hopefully more cool things can come uh, throughout this year uh, with this platform. Uh, Chris says, can you please drop a link to the power banks? Yes, I can. Uh, so we'll do this, copy this, drop this here. All right. Uh, so Chris, there is the link to the, uh, battery banks that we have. Um, <laughs> I see sacred saying we need a 24 hour live stream. I thought about doing a 24 hour live stream once. Um, and then I very quickly said no. Um, my, my voice wouldn't last. I like talking, but my, my voice wouldn't last. Um, let's see here. Any other questions? Uh, there's a couple that I had in the emails that I want to address right before we go. Um, the half press suggestion, give it a try. Uh, it doesn't work with back button focus. Yeah. So that is a little bit of the, the difference there, because if you have, if you're using back button focus, it means that that shutter button's disabled. So yeah, that might be a little bit of a, a weird, uh, might be a little bit of a challenge depending on how you have your camera set up. Um, yeah, so, uh, let's see here. Any chance Lumix can do a Dennis color grading stream? I saw him in Gerald and Dunn and he's a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I would love, uh, Dennis, I would love if you'd want to, uh, jump on a Lumix live stream and talk about color grading and, 
uh, your your LUTs and all that kind of stuff. I, I welcome the... Uh, er, er, here's a formal invitation, if you would like, um, uh, to come on and, and talk to everybody and talk about your LUTs and everything that you do there. Uh, that's totally cool, uh, if, if, that, if that's something you'd be interested in, too. You know how to reach out to me. Uh, I'm, we've, we've interacted on numerous different platforms. So, yeah. I'd love it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, will Lumix continue to update the GH5 Mark II in the near future? Um, we'll definitely continue to update it. Whether or not it's the near future, that I can't say. Um, cause I, partially because I don't know. And two, I, even if I did know updates that are coming, I wouldn't be able to share them. Um, but yeah, the, the, the GH5 Mark II is a current camera. That was one of the reasons why getting out of the original GH5 platform, uh, with the newer processor, newer revised version of the sensor, gives us more headroom for, uh, future updates. So, yeah. Let's see here. Um, just meant more setting options in each style. For example, the ability, the ability to add grain to any picture profile instead of one or two as it stands now. Oh, okay. Now I'm following. Just more like kind of minute control in the photo style. So that's the kind of stuff that if you um, if you shoot me an email at lumixlive at us.panasonic.com uh, or comment on this video after it's posted, just actually literally just write a comment and, and post it on there, um, that's one of the ways that I can get that information over to our engineers that is, you know, a little bit more substantial than saying, hey, we just want to see more, uh, you know, more control. Usually the question we then get back is, well, what kind of control would be asking? Um, so yeah, stuff like that. If you've got specifics on things that you want to see in these cameras, let us know them. Um, like always, it's not a guarantee that you, that we're going to be able to do all of this stuff or any of it, but the more information you guys provide us, the more we can work to develop future firmware updates or future cameras. It all just helps us build the cameras based on your feedback. Um, we're very much about building cameras based on what the actual users want, not necessarily chasing the next best thing in the world or, um, you know, doing the, the resolution chase kind of thing. We, we do things in ways that are measured. So with reliability being such a huge part of our brand's, uh, uh, you know, kind of way that we've always worked, you know, you pick up a GH camera and one of the first things that you, you realize or know is that, well, it's unlimited recording. It's built like a tank. It's just, you know, when you ask it to do something, it's going to do it. Uh, all of that is stuff that we've gathered as important things from all of you actually using these cameras and giving us the feedback. So yeah. Uh, I love getting the feedback from everybody. Let's see here. Uh, Andy says the focus transition, uh, on the GH6 and 4k live crop. So, uh, focus transition is 4k live crop isn't. Um, but I, I have asked for, for people to, uh, or, or for our engineers to see if, if live crop something that can, can make its way back into the GH6. Uh, Cliff says, thank you so much for all your PR work for Lumix. You and Matt are spectacular. No one else does what you do. Well, thank you, Cliff. Um, it's always nice to hear, uh, the feedback from, from the community. It's awesome. Uh, sorry, pro, pro tip for shooting multi-aspect ratio videos for social media. Shoot in the 4x3 anamorphic mode without an anamorphic lens, then frame for 16x9. Gives you extra clearance for making videos. Yes. Um, there is, I, I, I want to do kind of an actual like stream, sp particularly on this. Um, there is obviously not all of us like, or I actually do like them, but a lot of people are fighting against the vertical nine by 16 shooting, uh, or video recording. Um, but there is such a huge benefit of using the, what we call an anamorphic mode on our cameras but actually just using it as open gate. Uh, open gate is one of the probably most under-realized feature that we offer in a huge number of our cameras. You shoot in 4x3 aspect ratio or 3x2 on the uh, S1H, just crop later. It's one take uh, to then get all of your different uh, media out outputs in one particular take. Uh, I did a, 
a uh, quick fo uh, photo and video shoot for our Techniques brand. So those that don't know Panasonic and Techniques, it's, Techniques is part of Panasonic. Uh, and we had a DJ down here during South by Southwest and I got, uh, the opportunity to go photograph and film some BTS, uh, for the content. And what was great is I was able to use the GH6 shoot in four by three aspect ratio. So shoot in open gate with my, uh, I use the 15 millimeter Sumalux for a lot of that stuff. Cause I'm literally right on top of the turntables, shoot it in four by three. Load it into Premiere, since that's my editing software, and then just throw my 9x16 crop, my 16x9 crop. I was able to do a 4x5 crop out of it if I want, so that we've got all of these different options for the different platforms that we may want to run an add-on or uh, different areas that you want to share it, and you're not having to shoot multiple different takes of the same thing, all which will be slightly different. It's one take, one setup. It's it's a pretty solid uh, way to shoot. And as Strons pointed out, you get more vertical resolution when you do that instead of shooting nine by sixteen and then cropping sixteen by nine. It's such it's such an awesome way to shoot. And even if you're only ever going to output nine by or sixteen by nine, so regular sixteen by nine, it just gives you that that huge flexibility um, for reframing and working on on this content later. Um, the best example that I've ever seen of it is, you know, you look at major motion pictures, things like Dukes of Hazard, where, and I use that as the most commonly used example of this, jump in a car over, uh, uh, you know, a gap. You either have to be perfect if you've got the, the sensor masked off for 16 by 9, you got to be perfect if you're following that car and over. And you're never always going to be perfect with it. So you shoot that open gate and then you're just sliding your frame to follow. Uh, it, it's, it's so much fun to be able to actually do that and then just not have to worry about it in the moment. I worry about it in post when I actually have more time to think how I want my frame being slid around. Um, that's me just going nuts on uh, how much I like shooting an open gate. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Christopher says best lens for the BGH one. Uh, that depends on what you're shooting. Um, I use uh, BS one H here and I have the 35 millimeter F 1.8 that I use. Uh, I think I have it at about F two or I might actually have it at F 1.8 right now. Um, on my BGH one, I've actually changed over to using the 25 millimeter F 1.7 actually, um, because of the distance that I get. Um, you know, from where I am, it lets me use that as my glorified webcam, uh, and then two angle setup when I want to, uh, have stuff like that. So let's see here. Um, uh, let's see here. Never remove shutter angle. Yeah. That's never going away. Shutter angle is always going to be there. Uh, and then internal NDs, please. Uh, when the internal neutral density filter technologies catch up, uh, or make it to where you can have a camera the size of the GH6 with internal NDs, then you'll start seeing stuff like that happen. But as of right now, you'd have to make the GH... A GH camera would have to be the, as bigger than the box cameras because um, you'd want to have them moved out of the way. So look at EVAs, look at, you know, any of the higher-end cinema cameras that move ND filters out of the sensor stack. Um, yeah. They just got to be bigger. So part of that's just the technology isn't there yet uh, for the form factor that, you know, you try to build. Um, Dennis Kane says, will Panasonic have new LUTs for the 10-bit GH6? Uh, probably not. The uh, LUTs that are available for the V-Log V-Gamut are based on V-Log V-Gamut, not 10-bit in the GH5 or GH6. They're originally designed for the Vericam. Uh, and those that are curious... This is where you can take a look and pick up the LUTs for the GH6, our LUTs. So these are obviously the Panasonic provided ones. Um, this is where we have them available. You can download them. Um, the cool thing with the GH6 is that you can actually load cube files now. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not loading uh, the crazy high, high, like ultra high precision, I think. Um, but yeah, you have uh, options available. That's over on the uh, Panasonic Pro AV site which I will drop into the chat here. Uh, let's see here. 
Uh, Andy says, when is the firmware update coming for ProRes on an SD card? Probably never. SD cards are not fast enough for the bit rates that we're doing. So, um, that's why CF Express is needed, Andy. Um, SD cards, V90, unless you went to, I think, what's the new one? SDUX or whatever. Uh, the ultra fast ones that no one makes cards and you don't have the cards. Um, you need the sustained speeds for it. So CF Express is what you what, what you're gonna need for ProRes uh, on the GH6. So, uh, Carrie says I realize the discussion is primarily about mirrorless cameras, but want to know if the travel zoom line of pocket uh, size bridge cameras. Um, constantly use your ZS200 and you swear by it uh, for macro. Um. Not sure what the question is, Carrie, but, uh, yeah, so we, we've, it's still the current cameras that we've had for a little bit of time now. Um, so like ZS200, the TZ, depending on the regions that you're in, um, FZ300, FZ2500, they're all still the current cameras. Um, so yeah. Oh, uh, question was, is the ZS series dead now? Uh, no, um, ZS series, we still have all those cameras are still current. Um, I know that we haven't, put an updated version of them out in a little while. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're still current. Um, I don't think they're dead. We still sell them. So yeah, let's see here. Um, let's see. Last question I could take here. Uh, Robin. Okay. This is a good question. Could you please let us know about raw, be raw, any chance at internal? So the only thing we've mentioned about with the GH6 when it comes to RAW is that we will support 4K 120p RAW over HDMI, so RAW data over HDMI to the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. Um, outside of that, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have any new information I can share when it comes to RAW. Um, as we get closer to the release of that firmware obviously more um more information will definitely come out uh so definitely get subscribed follow us on the different platforms that's where you'll get the information the most um sign up for our emails um because you'll actually get it and you'll get lumix emails not panasonic washer and dryer or, well we don't sell washer and dryer here in the u.s um, like hair dryers and stuff like that, you'll get Lumix, uh, info there. So yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, actually, okay. I am going to take two last questions and then I do have to end cause I actually do have, uh, meetings that I have to do for the rest of my job. Uh, John asks, how many stops of IS with a non-stabilized lens? Also, will there be any ability to record raw video out over USB-C? So the first part of your question, uh, how many stops? So I assume you're referencing GH6. The GH6 is seven and a half stops, body only. The seven and a half stop dual IS is the extended range. So typically stabilization gets less effective the longer your telephoto is uh, for body stabilization. So we're able to maintain the same experience in stabilization from ultra wide all the way out to telephoto. Um, that's why we only ever really quote one number because it's the same. If you're using an adapted lens out to, I think it's about 120 millimeter, 35 millimeter field of view. Um, it's going to be seven and a half stops is what it's rate. It's spec'd at via SEPA. Um, dual IS just carries it out longer. I think it's out to like 240 uh, millimeter in 35, in 35 field of view. Uh, the second part of your question, I, I, unfortunately, I don't have any information, uh, as far as what, what raw is going to be supported out, um, from this camera and whether or not that's going to be something that can be done over USB-C. Um, typically I think as of right now, you have to have an external device that actually records, uh, and creates the raw file. Um, so you've got the, uh, uh, Ninja 5 and Ninja 5 Plus, so, um, where was that last question that came in? Uh, hi, Sean. Uh, can you explain one thing? Lumix G9. I used two speed light setups. One in, uh, one in uh, support mode. Problem was that no matter what shutter speed I set, the secondary light was invisible for the camera. Um, 
I'm probably going to have... That's one I, I, I'd recommend shoot us an email at lumixlive at us.panasonic.com. Um, the email address will be up at the end of the stream. Uh, email me there, um, because that's something that's, that's not really something I can troubleshoot over the stream. I would need to look at pictures and set up and stuff like that. So, um, that would probably need a little bit more, uh, kind of involved info, uh, for that one. Uh, cool. So, uh, that's pretty much it for uh, the the time I have for today's stream. So thank you all so much for tuning in and getting all of these awesome questions. Uh, I really appreciate it. The, the conversation back and forth, the recommendations that all of you uh, give us are awesome. They are critical to, you know, being able to evolve these cameras and make them better and better. Um, we, we love to pride ourselves on the fact that we, we are building cameras for actual users, not, uh, chasing spec lists all the time. You know, uh, we will be back next Thursday at 2 PM Eastern time. Um, I don't have the stream stream information yet. Um, been a little behind, uh, getting some of that stuff set up. Uh, but we, we will be back next Thursday at 2 PM. Um, before we go, I want to remind everybody to, Take a look over at our Instagram page. Follow us over there if you don't already. Um, feel free to reach out to us through direct messages if you want to continue conversations and ask us more questions. Uh, and use the hashtag where Lumix goes if you want to have your content featured over on our page. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, there are always firmware updates that have typically come out that a lot of people may not have realized came out. Uh, we talked about it already here. The GH6 did get a version 1.1 firmware update. Uh, you can snag that over at the website uh, now, and I'll drop these after I stop talking, so you'll have them all in the chat. Um, there's also all of the lenses that got updated uh, on the Micro Four Thirds platform that support the linear manual focus control on the GH6, all that fun stuff. So make sure to go take a look at the, that uh, site. I'll drop the link in the chat in a minute. Um, and then if you're in the United States, as a heads up, we have our, we're actually returning back to more events in person uh, if you want to go talk to uh, someone from our company, uh, probably not me, because most of these are actually not around here. Uh, although maybe I will swing by Precision Camera this weekend, uh, and since that's local, uh, with my GH6. Uh, feel free to take a look over on uh, the Lumix Facebook page. We've got a list of our events here um, and links to get yourself registered if the dealer is asking for registration. Uh, we're constantly adding more to here, so if you don't see an event around your particular region, uh, keep an eye on the page. We're always updating it as more and more events come in. Um, as we said, the compatibility lists, all that stuff. Lots. Uh, yeah, cool. I think I got all that stuff. So, again, thank you all so much. Um, I'm going to drop these links in the chat now um, so that uh, I don't forget. So... There's a link to the events. Here's a link to the firmwares. Here is a link to our Instagram channel. And then I'll drop this one again too, just, just so it's there. And then here's the link to the LUTs that you can get uh, from the Panasonic generated LUTs uh, for your camera. So outside of that, Thank you all so much. Uh, so we'll be back next Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Looking forward to it. Uh, and yeah, I hope everyone has an awesome rest of your day and an awesome weekend. And uh, yeah, I will uh, talk to everybody next week. Take care. Bye.